right, folks, welcome back to another review with yours truly, Sam Healy. Today, we're taking a look at this little guy right here, Kodinka. It is a uh, two to four player abstract strategy game from Backspindle Games or Ninja Division, whichever you would like, take your pick. Um, and it is a tile flipping and rearranging game. Sounds strange, but let's get down to the table and I'll show you. So in a game of Kodinka, uh, the tiles are set up at the beginning of the game the same way every single time, and the pattern that's used is inside the box there. So every single time you play the game, the, the tiles will start the same. So that's very uh, a very cool thing about it. Now after you have the tiles set up, each player is going to be given a hand of cards that are, uh, you get four key cards. We'll explain those in a moment. And then you also get three spirit cards and we'll also explain those. The four cards that you're going to get that are your key cards are going to be one card from four different decks that come in the game. You have, first of all, a uh, diagonal four deck, which means that in order to finish this key, you have to get all of your color on the white side or the stone side in a diagonal pattern, so forth and so on. The whole point of the game is for you to be the first one to finish all four of these key cards to be the first one to do that. So you have the diagonal four, uh, then you also have a straight uh, four or a line of four. Here, you need the, the ones on the outside need to be on the uh, gold side and the two in the middle need to be on the stone side, which is like this. Then you also have a block key card. Uh, so a block of four, which means that, you know, these four need to be your color. And then for this particular one, it has to, they all have to be on the gold side, or it can be these four down here, these four, wherever there's a block. And then you also have the four corners. Now the four corners can be done if you have these four corners done, or these four corners done, or these four corners done, it, it, it just so that it's not a block, so it differentiates from this, so there has to be a space between the outer corners. Now, very key to getting your tiles into those different configurations are the spirit cards. Now the spirit cards, well, first of all, they're used as an extra action, so they don't take one of your actions. These are free actions, so to speak. You can use a spirit card to shift a line, so basically, going like this, or you can use a spirit card to shift a block either 90 or 180 degrees. So you can shift it this way or this way, whichever you'd like. Then on the other side, there are traps. And basically what this means is that what you're doing here is you would be able to choose, like for example, if this were the way that it would go, these four, would switch to their stone sides. These four would also switch to their stone sides or white sides. And then all of the other ones would turn to their golden sides. So this is another way, for example, if you had, I don't know, all four of yours in here and you had the one where they all had to be a block and they all had to be gold, that might be a good one to play because after you play that, all four of yours would turn to gold. Then you could say, hey, I finished this. Now I'm one fourth of the way to winning. Okay, so these spirit cards are invaluable. There's different kinds of traps patterns on them. They're invaluable to gaining those different kinds of uh, configurations completed. On your turn, it's very simple. All you get to do, you have two actions, and those actions can be any combination of a switch, which is taking one of yours and switching it with, with one of the other ones, like this, or a flip, where you take a tile and simply flip it over from its stone side to its gold side, or vice versa. Now, if you decide to do a flip, you can flip any tile. It does not have to be your own, but if you decide to do two flips, one of those two has to be one of your tiles. So for example, if I decided, if I'm playing green and I decided that I wanted to do two flips, I would say I'm flipping this over and then I'm also flipping this one over. Okay, so that was two flips, but one of them was my color, so that's okay. A switch, however, has to always include one of your colored tiles. So if you wanted to do two switches, that's fine, but they would both have to be 
involving one of your colored tiles. You could also do, say, a flip and a switch. That it would also be a, 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 a valid move. And what you're simply trying to do is, like for example, on my next turn, I could simply take and switch this, and then I'm gonna flip this one. That's my turn, but I'm going to show that I got all of mine in a diagonal row, and they're all gold, so now I'm done. And as far as with that one, now I'm closer to winning. And really that's it. Each person takes turns of taking two actions each, uh, keeping in mind that those spirit cards are free actions that you can use during your turn, but you do have to be kind of uh, judicious on when you use them and when you don't, because once they're used, they're gone. You can't use them a second time. So that's something to think about. And uh, the first person to finish all four of their key cards, which are these guys right here, wins. So that is quite simply Kodinka. It is not a difficult game at all, but it has a lot of meat to it as far as strategy and uh, player interaction is concerned. Uh, you're probably the purest form of the game is a two-player uh, version where it is one brain against another and there's very little else going on. However, with a three or four player game, that's where the meat really starts flying because not only do you have to worry about just one other person and their reconfiguration of the tiles on their turns, you have to worry about two or three other people reconfiguring those tiles. So it becomes a little bit more luck based at that point because you're um, possibly wanting to, you're having to kind of rely upon those other people moving your tiles the way that you want them to be moved um, and working on what they leave you, being a little bit more sneaky, I guess you could say, as far as uh, letting on what type of key card you're trying to accomplish at any given moment in the game. So a three or four player game is much more cutthroat, much more, um, how can you say, um, uh, just mean, or at least it feels that way. Everybody's just trying to accomplish their own key cards in mind. They're not really necessarily trying to mess up anybody else, but there are those times in the game where messing up somebody else and not helping yourself is actually necessary so that they don't win the game on their turn. So there is a lot of different thought that, thoughts that can go into this game, a lot of different kinds of strategies that go into it, but at the same time, it is not so heavy. So that's one of the things that I like about it. I don't like abstract strategy games that feel like they're burning my brain uh, to oblivion. Uh, this one has a, a pretty heavy thought process that goes on uh, because you are having to configure the tiles the way that you want them to go, having to counteract how moves uh, have been done. One of the most important rules in the game is that you cannot actually uh, undo the previous person's last move. And that becomes very important because uh, you can just get into this cat and mouse thing. Well, I'm going to do this. Well, I'm going to undo that. Well, I'm going to do it back and, and so forth and so on. You, you run the danger of getting into a loop. But with that one sing, single solitary move, the no reverse rule, uh, that kind of fixes that whole thing where you cannot undo the last thing that the previous player did. So that is a cool aspect of the game as well. Undoing that last person's move is the one thing that's going to get you to uh, uh, where you need to be to finish a key card. So you have to figure another way around that. That's a really cool thing about the game. I had the chance to watch the championship round of a speed tournament of Kodinka at uh, the uh, UK Game Expo. And man, I'm going to tell you, that was a cutthroat, nail-biting game. Now, the speed aspect was taken away for the championship game, so, uh, but they had to win games to get to that championship round. One of the guys won in just over two minutes. He finished all four key cards in just over two minutes, uh, chess style, where you make a move and you hit your clock, and then you make another move and you hit your clock, and so forth and so on. So it was a really neat thing to watch, and uh, one, of the, one of the games that I'm really happy that I actually was able to pick up, I'm very happy to give it a review. Now, as I've said before, I'm not a big abstract uh, game fan. Uh, this one is one of the ones that I'm going to be keeping. Uh, it falls into that same 
uh, kind of heavy, but not real heavy. Maybe a mid-weight, heavy, thinky kind of game, but it has a spatial organization um, to it that I really do enjoy. So this is one of those games, those abstract strategy games that hits for uh, uh, on all pistons as far as I'm concerned, and I really do enjoy it. As far as abstract strategy games are concerned, this is a very strong 7.5, maybe even an 8 uh, for me. The components are really nice. The tiles are very, um, uh, a very heavy, uh, almost, uh, I can't remember what kind of game these are used in before, but they're, they're very nice pieces and I like them a lot. The engravings on them uh, are set in so that uh, it's not going to go away, not going to rub off anytime soon. Uh, the different cards, they're kind of thin, uh, but at the same time, you're not really handling them that much during the game anyway because they're just used really as references to what you need to accomplish during the course of the game. So they get kind of a pass as far as that's concerned. Uh, the box that it comes in, it has that little magnetic flap box style that's becoming more popular nowadays. I really do like these kinds of boxes. So all in all, this is a really nice package. And if you like abstract strategy games, this is probably going to seem like a little bit of a filler to you. Uh, but I think you'll still find it worthy of your attention. So next time you have the ability, check out Kodinka from Ninja Division or Backspindle Games. And hey guys, we'll see you on the flip side.